Welcome to session 26, okay? Uh, in this one, we're going to be looking at functions. Now, functions, what do we mean by functions? It seems to, to sometimes cause a bit of consternation because if you remember back to functions, or let's just go before we even started talking about this function term, all right? Let's just put in over here something that we had before. I keep going back to this x with the input, and y was the output. Okay. What did we do? We took the input value, we put it into something, and we worked out an output value. That's all we did. Okay. What does that mean? That means that x is related to y. Because every x has got a specific y. Okay. So that is, we say that they are functions of each other. Okay? So therefore, y is related to x. Okay? In other words, y depends on x. Okay? Let's just put that down. y depends on x. Therefore, y is a function of x, all right? That's all we're saying. So the whole concept of the notation f of x and stuff like that, all we're saying is that the y depends on the x we put in. Because if whichever x we put in, we get a y. That's it. So y is a function of x. Okay. Right. So the x and the y, they're kind of unique, aren't they? Okay. They're an ordered pair on their own. Let's always remember that if you've got an x, you can work out a y. If you've got a y, you can work out an x. You can always work out each other, okay, as long as you've got the function that defines the one and the other one, doesn't it? Okay, so let's have a look. This relationship is the function, and we say y, and in maths, we've got a notation. We say y is a function of x. That means function of x, okay? Okay. Now, before we go on to this a little more, let's just define something else. Remember the x and the y. Okay? So we put in x, we input x, and we get y. Okay? So y is a function of x. The values, the x values that we put in, the ones we choose, we call that the domain. All right? Domain. The y values that we get out, we call the range. Okay? So the x that we put in is the domain. The y we get out, we call the range. Okay? So therefore, y is, let's just stick it in, in here in red. Okay? This is the range. Y, and let's pick a different color, green, X, domain. How do you remember it? X before Y, D before R, right? X comes before Y, D comes before R. If you, if you want a little mnemonic or whatever they call these things to do it, okay? X comes before Y, and D comes before R in the alphabet. Okay, so we write this whole thing. Okay, we write it like this. Just let's uh, get it back there to black. Okay, now, let's see, how do we write it, okay? We write y equals f of x. Okay, y and f of x are the same thing. So where we had y is equal to 3x minus 2, you could also written f of x is equal to 3x minus 2. Okay, now let's just look at a, a few things that they're going to ask, all right? Just before we move on and, and start talking about the functions. They're going to say, they're going to say, given f of x equals 3x squared minus 9. Okay, what is f of 2? So what have we done? 
Let's just look at it coldly without maths. I had an x inside the bracket over there, didn't I? Okay. We had an x over here. What did we do? We've now put a 2 there. So therefore, we replace with this. Right? We replace with this. Okay? So therefore, f of 2 is 3 times 2 squared minus 9 is 3 times 4 minus 9, which is 12 minus 9, which is going to be equal to 3. Okay? Now, so therefore, every time we say we're given an f of x, given f of x, right? Okay, given function of x equals something. And then say, so what is f of something different? We replace the x in the previous one with the something different. So let's say, what is then f of x? I've got one here, plus 2. Well, what did we do last time? Okay, we said we had f of x. We replaced every x with x plus 2. Okay, can you see what I did? Previously, we had f of x. Let's just write it here equal to 3x squared minus 9. I replaced x squared with x plus 2. Then we have to multiply that out, and that comes to x plus 2, x plus 2 minus 9. Remember, do the calcs, and it comes to 3x uh, squared plus 4x plus 4, okay, minus 9. Multiply that out, and then you're going to get 3x squared plus 12x plus 12 minus 9. And it finally ends up as 3x squared plus 12x plus 3. Okay? So, whatever, if they give us an f of x, okay? So, let's say we are given, given, f of x equals something, all right? Let's take a, a, a different example. Let's just say it's equal to x squared minus 3x plus 4, just for argument's sake, right? Then they say, what is f of 3? We replace the x with this, 3. So then we say f of 3 is going to be equal to 3 squared minus 3 times 3 plus 4. And we work it out. 9 minus 9 plus 4 is equal to 4. Okay? Okay. Now, therefore, if they ask us in that one, let's just move it back down slightly. If they say, well, then what is f of minus x? Do the same. We replace the x with a minus x is equal to minus x squared minus 3 times minus x plus 4, which is x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay? You can see exactly what we've done there. All I've done is replace the x with the minus x. And that is all we're ever going to do with these things. The next question is they say, if f of x equals minus 9, okay? okay? They want you, what are they saying? What is f of x? f of x is that whole thing is being told was 3x squared minus 9, okay? Is equal to uh, minus 9. Therefore, you can now solve it, and basically you're going to get x is equal to 0, all right? So, all we're doing is we, we're just basically going through some very simple substitution procedures, okay? And some um, solving of equations. Take this one. Here's another example. f of x equal to 2x minus 5. Okay? What is f of minus 4? Well, it's 2 times minus 4. Please always substitute in brackets, okay? Always substitute in in brackets so that you don't get messed around by negatives or squares or whatever. Uh, minus 5, 
which is 2 times minus 4, okay, is uh, minus 8, minus 5 is going to be minus 13, okay. Then they say to us, okay, what is, remember, our f of x is this one, right? There it is. They say, what is f of x squared? Simple. We replace the x with whatever is there. And we say that is 2 times x squared minus 5, okay, which is going to be equal to 2x squared minus 5, okay? What is f of x minus 3? We replace it with 2x minus 3 minus 5. Multiply out 2x minus 6 minus 5 equals 2x minus 11. Okay? Now, essentially, all we're doing here is we are substituting in. All right? Um, here's another example. All right? Let's look at if they tell us f of x is equal to x squared minus x plus 2. Then they say, what is f of x plus 1? What do we do? We replace everything, every x, with that, don't we? Minus x plus 1, and can you see it's all in brackets? All right, then you multiply it all out, okay, which is going to be x plus 1, x plus 1, minus x plus 1, plus 2, which is going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1, okay, minus x minus 1 plus 2, simplify that whole lot, and you're going to get x squared plus x plus 2, all right? Therefore, what is f of minus 1, okay? f of minus 1, let's have a look, f of minus 1 is going to be replace minus 1 squared Minus, minus 1, plus 2. Minus 1 squared is 1, plus 1, plus 2, is 3, is 4. All right? So that's what we're doing. What if they said f of 0? f of 0. Well, we replace x with 0. It's 0 squared minus 0 plus 2. The answer is plus 2. All right? So if I put x equals 0, I get 2. Can you see this is actually a coordinate, 0 and 2? They are all coordinates, right? Because what does this actually look like? It is y equals x squared minus x plus 2. That's actually what it is, isn't it? So now what do we do? We say, okay, those are our, how we work with functions, right? So, if you're given an f of x equals something, what you do is then say, what is f of a number? You replace the x in the equation with that number. What if they say, well, then what is f of x plus 2? You replace with what's in the bracket, the x plus 2. You put that into the equation, also in brackets. Okay? So, all of those are essentially quite straightforward. But mentally, we've got to say to ourselves, just remember, what we're inputting here is we're inputting an x and getting a y because y and f of x are kind of interchangeable in all of this, all right? Now, in this chapter, all right, we're going to study, okay, we're going to study the following functions, okay? So I'm just going to make a list here of functions, all right, and general formula, okay, so the first function we're going to do is a straight line, all right, now the straight line we know is y is equal to mx plus c, each graph is going to have its own general formula that we're going to use. I personally prefer that when the gen when you're doing these graphs, you always write down the general formula for the graph, and we're going to see we need to manipulate sometimes the data that we're given into the standard form. Okay, 
We're going to do a few of these, all right? So let's have a look. A straight line. Number two is called a parabola. Okay? And its y is equal to ax squared plus q. The next one is going to be a hyperbola. Okay? As opposed to an e at the end there, it's y is equal to a over x plus q. Okay? Next year, we're going to get a little fancier with all of this. Okay? So now I'm going to do the last one, which is exponential. Exponential. Okay? Essentially, this is all going to be graphs. Okay? And the exponential is y is equal to a x, sorry, a b, a b, oh, b to the power of x plus q. I'm just going to underneath here write that this is also a x plus q, okay? Ax plus q, sometimes it's given as that, all right? What I want you to see is there's a lot of similarities here, all right? All we're doing is we've got a's and we've got q's that are coming in, okay? Now, what actually was is going on? First of all, let's look that, that always in any of these, nb, remember over here, right? We've got x and y input and output, okay? So what we put in is the x, we call it the domain, and we take the range over there like that, and that becomes our output, doesn't it? Okay, so what's the next? So, therefore, in any of these, if we, I'm going to write it down, if we know x, we can work out y. If we know y, we can work out x, because the two go together as ordered pairs. They are coordinates, okay? So, now, the straight line. Let's just have a look at the straight line um, on its own. The straight line has got a formula y is equal to mx plus c, all right? Can you remember m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1? And that is called the gradient, correct? The gradient, a.k.a. the slope, all right? So on any straight line, it has got a slope. And the slope is constant, otherwise it's not a straight line, right? Granted, we can have a number of different uh, uh, straight lines intersecting, but these slopes are different, okay? Let's have a look here. Let us take a, and just to refresh us, that is called the y-intercept, right? Over there, this is called the x-intercept over here, like that, okay? The x-intercept over there, okay, is also called the root, the root of the equation. The root, I like to think of it, that's where it goes to ground. So if this is ground, right? The root is where it goes into the ground, okay, or out of the ground, okay? Simple, into the ground, out of the ground. That I call the root. Just a way of thinking of it, if you like. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to, to conceptualize. Now, what do we say? We say, okay, we've got the y-intercept, the last few bits and pieces on this. Over here, I'm going to call this delta y, delta x. Delta, that word there, means change. Okay? Change in y. y2 minus y1. Delta x, change in x. x2 minus x1. Now, that is therefore the slope. M is delta Y over delta X. So the slope is that way, all right? The last little thing in here, well, we've got an angle theta, okay? And you can see that theta is equal to octan of delta Y over delta X, right? Let's just have a little look at that quickly before we move on. Uh, for those of you who who want to just see it clearer, 
Okay, there we go. What did we say? I'll just make it bigger over here. Okay, this is y2, y1, x2, and I've made x1 here, right? x2, remember, there's our y1, and there's our y2. Okay, this here, over here, delta y, is equal to y2 minus y1. Delta x is x2 minus x1. And remember, the gradient is delta y over delta x. But the angle theta there, can you see it? Okay. What do we say? We say that, in fact, look at theta. That is going to be opposite. Let's change color. Uh, opposite and adjacent. So, tan of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is delta y over delta x. Therefore, theta is going to be octan delta y over delta x. But what is delta y over delta x? It's m. It's the angle whose tangent is the gradient. Okay? Now, that's quite straightforward, okay? And, and essentially, all this is is just a little bit of manipulation. The, the last thing, just to recap of these before we go into some examples with it, is remember, if M, the gradient, okay, is less than naught, we say that the line slopes that way, okay? We talk of a negative slope. Negative so, okay, well, obviously, con conversely, right, conversely, if the gradient is the other way, all right, if the gradient is the other way, what do we say? We say it slopes that way. That means that M is greater than zero. Okay. You'll notice I haven't put a zero in because if M is equal to zero, it's split. Okay, so... Essentially, let's call this the shape of the graph, okay? So, we've now got the gradient and, and, and we've spoken about a few things, all right? We're going to look at, at the graphs in a bit more detail now. How do we sketch them? How do we interpret them, okay? Well, all we've got to remember is, first of all, we're going to do straight line, then we're going to introduce the others, okay? So before I go into the next section, I'm going to break it at that point. It's a little bit shorter, 24 minutes, 25. But what we've got here is we've got the basics of our straight line graph, okay? And then we're going to look at uh, parabola, hyperbola, and exponential graphs, okay? I'll see you in the next session. Thanks for watching.